all the people of God said amen. Amen. Praises be to our God for this day and for this privilege to gather together in this sacred space to celebrate Him for who He is, for all that He has done and does. And we can praise Him in advance for what He is about to do. Honorable Pastor, friend, and brother, Dr. Brown, presiding preacher, Reverend Clergy, the leadership and laity of this kind and cordial and sweet-spirited congregation, those who are sharing as guests tonight, my brothers and sisters, how sweet it is to be a child of God. And have this privilege to gather together in his house for his cause. One more time, one with the other, warm us our praise unto him. And certainly he is worthy of our presence and our praise. Amen. I am indeed honored, and I'll say it, and I'll say it again. How humbled and honored I am to have the privilege to stand in this place where such an able bodied and minded preacher resides as pastor, preacher, under shepherd, guide, and guard, and leader for the lovely people of God. And that in the person, that being in the person of your pastor, Dr. Craig Brown. Thank you for allowing our coming here tonight. 
night. And I pray that in that we gather, our prayers are going up, and so has our praise. All right, we need to hear from heaven now. Yes, sir. Speak, Lord, in this place tonight. Give me your word to preach. Yes, Give me the essentials to deliver it. Give each of us the capacity to receive it. Yes, sir. And I pray that you will give all of us the ability to make it practical. All right, now. We're already committed to give you the praise. Yes, Therefore, I say the prayer I pray and the awesome and able, abiding and accessible, avenging and availing, and all right in the name of Jesus, the people of God, say amen. amen. If you have your Bibles, there's a word in the sixth chapter of the book of Joshua. Joshua, the sixth uh, chapter. Beginning with the first verse of the few of the following. And I commend those of you who stand to give honor to the reading of God's word. Once you shall have found that passage and read it there, and you may see these words. I'll be reading in the English Standard Version, which reads as follows. Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I've given Jericho into your hand with this king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Thus shall you do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark. And on the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat. And the people shall go up, every man in their strength before him. Yes, sir. That's enough. Turn to the person closest to you. Shake a hand if you're not anti-social. <laughs> Tell them these words, neighbor. Neighbor. I'm getting mine. I'm getting mine. Give God praise for what he did on the table. It was a celebrated gospel artist, Richard, a.k.a. Clean-Head White, who made popular a hit gospel tune, God is not through blessing you. And in the lyrical expression, that song he has heard to say, you've been waiting on your blessing. And it seems they just won't come. Yeah. Doors are shut. Things are rough. And it seems like you are dumb. But the devil is a liar. And a deceiver too. God is not true. Blessing you. Yeah. 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 Such a lyrical expression emanates from the heart and soul of one who has observed the abysmal depths of the Almighty God, who, when He deems it necessary for His people to move further and enjoy His favor, nothing and nobody can stop God from blessing his people. And nothing and nobody can stop his people 
from getting to what God wants them to have. Might I put this on pause rather quickly and say it, and I'll say it parenthetically, that I am not a part of your prosperity preaching pack. I'm not a part of your pitiful, petty, petulant pack of pulpit pants. <laughs> Your clergy collar wearing coin collector. I do believe that God is in the blessing business. And God can bless anybody. God can heal anybody. God can lift anybody. God can raise him, bow down head. God can make a way out of no way. God can mend any broken heart. God can dry any tear stained eye. God can move in it. Mountain, I'm trying to give you time to catch up. And the mountains, he won't move. He'll give you strength to climb. God can do anything, anywhere, anytime, for anybody, under any circumstance, because he wants his children blessed. And I don't believe you have to indulge in any kind of hocus pocus or black magic in order to procure what God wants you to have. You don't need a healing line to get what God wants you to have. You don't need to put your hand on some television screen and have some televangelist who doesn't know you from a hog in Sunday school to pray for you and promise you a blessing. You don't need to mail off any of your money to get a piece of bishop's shirt. If God wants you blessed, he can bless you without the shirt. What God wants you to have, you're going to get it. And, and beloved, that you don't need to travel south to the borders of Louisiana. Have someone to fix you for travel. You don't need anyone to read your palm. You don't, you don't need some gypsy to shake some crystal ball. And, and tell you what your horoscope means. You don't need some black cat ball or some hold your hand or some rabbit's foot in your pocket. And some good luck charm. If the foot didn't help the rabbit. And it, and it comes with an agenda in so many forms. Uh -huh. 
with expressions of so much cold language. Like, like we need to make America great again. Watch the cold word. In fact, you can't make great again what you never made great in the first place. to prevent the people of God from moving any further. I need to hear somebody shout, they'll get in your way. They said you never get that. They said you never 
and that they eventuated into the immediate proximity of the city of Jericho. Yeah. And the writer says, oh. it was shut up. Yeah. Oh. In my black color, African American, Negro Baptist, Ebonic preaching, <laughs> what nothing happened. <laughs> and God therefore conveyed to Joshua, the leader and successor of Moses as a work he and Israel had to indulge yeah. in order to dispense with the wall, which for us become some subjective scenarios as a work we could possibly employ to handle our walls because I discovered, Dr. Brown, that all walls are not made of stone and brick and mortar and wood and pitch and steel and iron.
some fruit orchard to pick apples or pear. And you know, I grew up in an era where children were not afforded the privilege of parental negotiation.
You're going to have to participate in the process. I need to hear somebody shout, I got to do something myself.
He said, tell the priest to get the rams home, which were used as trumpets in worship. And didn't tell the warriors to get behind the weapons. And didn't tell the people to get behind the warriors who were behind the worshipers and start long. You still don't hear what I said. He said, tell the priest those were God's work. To get the heart of the covenant. That was the box that bore God's word. And he said, get the rims on. There were trumpets that were used as trumpets in worship. And he said, tell the people. Simple. 
Yeah. <laughs>